The Metropolitan Transportation Authority was created to provide faster and more comfortable transportation for the people of this region. Major engineering problems were involved in the recent MTA decision to add 52 miles of new track to the system. The biggest problem, how to relieve the pressure on existing East River bridges and tunnels with a new crossing. A crossing that could handle half a million rail passengers a day between Manhattan and Queens. The solution to the problem? A remarkable two-level tunnel that would run under the East River and through Welfare Island. is to reach the level of the tunnel. Two construction shafts are excavated, one on Welfare Island and one in Queensbridge Park. Each shaft is deep enough to contain a 10-story building. Alongside the Queen shaft, excavation also has begun for an electrical substation of the Long Island Railroad. 10,000 cubic yards of soft overburden are removed. The water table lies only 10 feet beneath the surface in Queensbridge Park. A single large coffer dam encloses both the shaft and the substation excavation. Steel sheet piles are driven tightly together to support the earth sides and minimize the inflow of groundwater. Some 500 feet of the tunnel will run under Queens at a depth of 90 feet. Four subaqueous tubes will traverse the East River, linked by a 650-foot tunnel through Welfare Island. The Welfare Island shaft is sunk at the edge of the West Channel. This coffer dam is sealed with concrete to prevent flooding. Overburden is hoisted out in a battleship bucket. Problem. The loose strata beneath the overburden split easily, and explosions within 10 feet of the coffer dam may carry through and undermine it. Solution. The shaft is dynamited in 10-foot layers or lifts, with no blasting within 10 feet of the coffer dam. This rock was excavated by mechanical means for the first two lifts. When the tunnel is completed, these construction shafts will provide space for ventilation, emergency exits, and utility cables. A boat with a drilling tower bores blast holes in the river bottom. A dredge brings up the loose muck on a 24-hour basis. They are digging a trench across the West Channel into which two of the underwater tubes will be sunk. Operations here are complicated by heavy river traffic, by four tidal shifts each day, and by a current that sometimes reaches six knots. Three large construction companies are sharing the $69.5 million primary contract for the 63rd Street Tunnel. Peter Kewitt Sons of Omaha, Nebraska, Morrison Knudsen of Boise, Idaho, and Slattery Associates of New York City. An important subcontract has been awarded to Wiley Manufacturing Company of Port Deposit, Maryland to construct the steel hulls of the four underwater tubes. Precise prefabrication is the key to the Wiley operation. Steel plates and ribs are welded into about 90 sub-assemblies, which are then assembled into the 375-foot shell for each tube. Using shipbuilding techniques, 10 keel panels are laid on the shipway. Hood plates attached to the two mid-river bulkheads will lock the tubes underwater. 20 side panels are welded on, and 10 top panels. The cross-sectional dimensions are 40 foot square. Cross braces are installed separating the upper level, which will carry transit authority trains, from the lower, where Long Island Railroad trains will run. Added next, reinforcing steel and conduits for electric cables. After watertight bulkheads seal both ends of the tube, it is ready for phase two, concrete outfitting that will turn the shell 
into the finished tube. MTA Chairman William Ronan and members of the board are on hand as the first tube is launched into the Susquehanna River for its voyage to the outfitting site in Norfolk, Virginia. Graciously hear us, O Lord, in these our supplications and vouchsafe to bestow thy blessing upon this tunnel protected also both here and on its way to its final destination. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We appreciate very much indeed the work which has been done so well on schedule by the Wiley management and officers and to Kewitt Morrison and Slattery and our congratulations to the workmen who have so successfully launched the first section of our tunnel. While the first tube lies in the outfitting dock in Norfolk, Virginia, a large drill boat anchors just off Wilfer Island. The landward ends of the tubes will rest in rock niches blasted from the sloping riverbanks. These drills bite into the rock 100 feet under the surface of the river. As a precautionary safety measure, charges are not detonated while men are at work in the Wilfer Island Tunnel, just a few hundred feet to the east. Inside Welfare Island, the dimension of the excavation is enlarged to create a cavern 615 feet long, with a roof 75 feet high in some areas. This huge hole will accommodate the Welfare Island subway station and access escalators. An upper drift first established the route of the station. Excavation can then proceed in descending levels. A precise pattern of holes permits the most rock to be moved with the least amount of explosives. First, a cut shot is drilled. At its vertex, a cluster of holes form a V. When the charges are fired, the V opens toward the surface, making an exit, or a relief area for surrounding rock. Dynamite and blasting caps are kept above ground in separate guarded magazines until the holes are ready. Detonators afford the critical measure of control. In the blasting pattern, the relief area is fired first, and then the surrounding rock. The excavated cut shot serves as the relief for blasting the adjacent wall. Steel ribs support the tunnel roof, which is 70 feet wide. 105 men, working three shifts around the clock, extend the upper drift three and a half feet each day. Norfolk, the track slab is fitted with a final steel grid that will be incorporated into the concrete walls. Each tube will gain 15,000 tons of concrete in this process. Lines from the concrete pump will supply opposite sections of the wall simultaneously. Thus, the tube will remain level during the pouring process. Cement is pumped directly from truck to batching plant. Aggregate is dumped into the loading bin and conveyed to the mixer. The touch of a button controls the blend. Concrete is pumped at one cubic yard per minute, over the gangway, down the drop pipe, between the steel forms. After the concrete hardens, forms are removed and transferred to the next tube, docked alongside. Meantime, a specially outfitted barge arrives to screed, or to level, 
the fist-sized rocks that will constitute the trench floor. A traveler set to the gradient spans the pontoons of the barge. A problem in this operation is that powerful underwater currents can swirl the screeded rock out of the trench. Underwater dikes to shield the trenches and later the tubes from the river currents are used. Shortly before midnight on May 13, 1971, a tugboat eases alongside the first tube in Chesapeake Bay. The seal tube, 40 feet high, is floating only two feet above the surface. A model test has been performed to determine the seaworthiness of the 16,000 ton tube. It is stable against 15 foot waves, hurricane conditions in deep water. The tow cable is attached. Steel hawsers are burned and pried apart. The tugboats and the tube set out for New York on the flood tide. Four and a half days later, they arrive to a grand reception in the New York Harbor. People have been waiting for years for the tunnel to Queens, and here it is, the first section of the prefabricated tunnel. It's come all the way from Maryland and Virginia up to these shores. It left uh, last uh, Friday at 12.01, and it's been at sea all this time being towed by tugs. As we stand here, uh, all we see is really the top of the tunnel because there's 40 feet of uh, diameter of this tunnel and barely about two feet showing. So it's like a big iceberg, most of it's underwater. But uh, when people are actually going through this tube, which they will be in a few years, in subways, new subway to Queens, which certainly, uh, Sid, you're going to be pleased with, and new Long Island Railroad service, the East Midtown Manhattan. It's going to be uh, interesting to look back on this day with the first section arriving here. So this is a banner day. When this massive tube is literally and figuratively put in place, it will mark the beginning of this vast network of transit improvements, 52 new miles of subway, a new Long Island Railroad line into the east of Manhattan with a new terminal, and many other major transportation improvements in this, the world's largest metropolitan center and the greatest rail network. So we greet the tube as it comes under the Verrazano Bridge. Welcome, and I think it deserves a round of applause for arriving about on time. <laughs> Fifteen hundred tons of stone will be piled atop each tube to sink it into the trench. It will be guided into position using laser beams for alignment. Though 100 feet down in the murky river, there's an allowable deviation of only one inch laterally and three inches vertically. All four tubes will be in place before the end of 1971. The 63rd Street Tunnel is underway. A monumental MTA project carried out with care and precision. By 1976, it will be in daily use. <laughs> 